So now in a previous video, we looked at using a capacitor directly to keep an LED lit for a brief period of time when you remove the switch. It was very fast and uh, it didn't last very long. Now we're going to extend that time by using an NPN bipolar junction transistor. The capacitor just needs to keep the NPN bipolar junction transistor on, which is just a very small amount of current. But in any case, it'll be on fully and uh, so will the LED and then it'll fade off. It'll slowly get less and less conductive. So here's a quick demonstration of that right there. So the LED would not be on anywhere near that long if we just tried to uh, set this timing with the capacitor alone. So as you can see in the schematic, the current path for the protective resistor and LED is through the collector and emitter to ground. So emitter is the left pin if you're using a 2N3904 or any other bipolar junction transistor that starts with 2N. I always look up the data sheet though to verify. So left pin emitter, that's down there. Middle pin base, that's right there. And a collector, that side of the NPN bipolar junction transistor. So in any case, you can see the current path there. The amount of current that flows through there depends on how much current is flowing from base to emitter. But it's a mini multiple. Maybe it's 100 times. So we just need like 1 one hundredth maybe of the current going from base to emitter that we want to go from collector to emitter. So we close the switch. We have that amount of current to get the LED fully lit. When we open the switch, the capacitor... When we close the switch, it completely uh, charged instantly. And then when we open the switch, it starts discharging through the uh, resistor, the base to emitter, back to ground. So as it discharges, its voltage is going to go down, current's going to go down, and finally, there's not going to be enough current for the collector to emitter to be fully on. It will be partially on. So fully on, that's called saturated. Partially on, that's called active region. And so current's going to go down as current goes down there. But it's still many multiples. But uh, finally, the capacitor will run out of enough energy to move current, and that's called cutoff. The transistor will be fully off, and the LED will be fully off. And of course, as always, it's best to look at the voltages, and with changing voltages, you want some kind of an oscilloscope. So we got the cable that comes out there. It comes to these alligator clips. I clipped a jumper so I can quickly just move them around the board right there, and we will zoom in a little bit. So our voltage is going to be in relationship to ground, right there to begin with when we look at how charged the capacitor will be. So you can see the top of the switch is to the positive supply there. Bottom of the switch, it's separated top to bottom. We could even uh, measure right here if we want. That's a direct measurement of the capacitor. So you can see that uh, we got about 0.6 volts across the capacitor because it takes about 0.6 volts for the uh, base to emitter to conduct and allow current to go through them. So now I'm going to hit the button and you can see the capacitor instantly charged to 5 volts and the capacitor instantly turned on. When I release the switch, now you can see the uh, capacitor discharged really quick. And the LED doesn't really fade until you get uh, pretty close there to about the uh, 0.6 volts and uh, maybe even the 1 volt or something. But in uh, any case, even though you saw a rapid voltage drop of the capacitor, the LED was fully on for a little bit. So now, the easiest way to know how long the capacitor is fully on, by the way, it's a 220 ohm resistor protecting the LED, a 10 kilo ohm resistor limiting current from uh, the capacitor through the uh, base to emitter, also from the positive supply when we close the switch. So we can go to the collector and check the voltage across the transistor right there. And what we're mostly interested in, we got the uh, voltage drop of the LED right there. And uh, that's why it's not the uh, full 5 volts. But in any case, there you can see there's no voltage across the transistor. And when I release the switch, once you see that curve going up, it was starting to lose a little bit of voltage. But really, hardly any. The LED was practically fully on until that point. That's when the LED started fading off. And once it levels off, the LED will be off completely but we kind of consider about around there probably fully off. So now to speed things up I uh, moved the jumpers already. We are across the load right there. You're going to see a couple things. First off we have about a volt and a half. That's because there's a tiny trickle of current going. We got a kind of a voltage divider effect. Transistors practically not conducting other than a little trickle. Same with the uh, LED. And so we're seeing the uh, voltage build up. The forward voltage of the LED. But for most considerations it's completely off but there's a little trickle of current so 
the uh, meter can see that voltage build up. Now also you see it's wavering. That's because, as I said before, they're not really conducting. There's capacitive in effect involved. There's electromagnetic energy in the air, and uh, sometimes I may be able to influence it. And so that builds up a little voltage, and there's really nowhere for it to go to uh, dissipate. And so it's really, really weak, but uh, if you got a sensitive measuring tool, you can really see it easily. So in any case, that's it for that. Now, when I hit the button, we got the full 5 volts across the resistor in LED. That's what we're really interested in, and it was on fully. Now when I release the switch, you can see it's on fully for a period of time, and uh, then it suddenly... Uh, starts dropping relatively quickly and then when it gets pretty flat right there that's about when we consider it fully off so there was a little trickle of current maybe a real faint glow but for the most part we consider that off and once it uh, pretty much flat lines other than that noise we saw before that'll be completely off so in any case hope that all made sense make sure you check out one of the other videos i'm posting click like subscribe the bell all that donate to patreon if you can that helps out the most but just watching videos helps out a ton thanks to everybody that does that i'll see you in the next video